Hello world, welcome to Career Deep and myself Mohan Rajamani. In this session, we are going to discuss previous year TCS NQT numerical ability questions. Without wasting a single second, we can enter into our first question. If the five digit number 776XY is divisible by 3, 7 and 11, then the value of 5X plus 3Y is dash. So we have a five digit number in that five digit. We don't know the last two digits, which is given as XY. And the hint given to you is this number, five digit number is divisible by 3, 7 and 11. Now what we can do, we can find the lowest number which is divisible by 3, 7 and 11. So the least number divisible by 3, 7 and 11 is nothing but LCM of the given three numbers. So these three numbers are prime numbers. So how to find the LCM of the prime numbers? Just multiply it. 3 into 7, 21. 21 into 11, 231. So 231 is the lowest number which is divisible by uh, 7, 3 and 11 separately. Now, definitely multiples of 231 is divisible by 3, 7 and 11, right? So what is the next multiple of 2, 3, I mean 231? 462. So that is the next multiple of 231. So 231 into 2, 231 into 3, 231 into 4, like that. Multiple of 231 is also divisible by 3, 3, 7 and 11 independently. Now we can write the highest number of 776 series. The highest number of 776 series is 77699. So instead of XY, we substituted 99. So it should be different values. Now I have taken 77699 as the greatest five digit number in 776 series. Now I divide this 77699 by 231 to find the multiple of 231 below 77699. So three times 231, I get 693. Right, so double seven six double nine minus six ninety three. I mean double seven six minus six ninety three. So it is three times and it's eight. Okay, now I can take this nine here. Now again three times. Right, so three nine six. Now again I subtract this nine minus three six. Thirteen minus nine you get four, and seven minus six one. Now again I take this nine here. Now. 6 times. So 6 times 1, 6. 6 times 3, 18. Carry over 1. 6 times 2, 12, 13. Now 3 and 8. Right? So 83. Now 83 is the remainder. When you divide 776, 99 by 231, you get 83 as the remainder. If you subtract this 83 from 776, 99, you get 77616. Now, 77616 is the number which is divisible by 231. If it is divisible by 231, then the same number is also divisible by 3, 7, and 11 independently, right? So, what will come in the place of x, y? 1, 6, right? So, value of x is 1 and value of y is 6. Now, you have to find 5x plus 3y. Now, 5 into instead of x, you have one and instead of y, you have six. So five plus six threes are 18. So five plus 18, you get 23. So 23 is your answer. So the question is based on LCM. So I hope you understood this problem. Now moving to question number two. Every year in TCS NQT, they are asking a question from simplification and that too from board mass rule. We know what is board mass bracket of division, multiplication, addition, and subtraction. So this is priority of the simplification operation we are giving. Now here you have bracket as well as off. First you have to solve bracket, then off, then division, multiplication, addition, subtraction. So first we try to solve this bracket. Inside the bracket you have off. So first we have to solve this. So if you have off, you have to multiply that. So 2 by 15 into 3 by 8. So 2 by 15 into 3 by 8. So if we do that, it's 5 times and this is 4 times. So 1 by 5 into 4, you get 20. So you have 3 by 40 here. So I bring this 3 by 40. So 3 by 40 divided by 1 by 20. So 3 by 40 divided by 1 by 20 can be reciprocated like this. So it is 20 by 1. So how many times? 2 times. Now you have 3 by 2 here. Instead of this, we have 3 by 2. Next, I solve the second bracket. So which is 1, 1 by 9 divided by 8 by 15. So first, I have to solve this division, which is priority. So 9 times 1 is 9. 9 plus 1, 10. So you have 10 by 9 divided by 8 by 15. So you can reciprocate like into 15 by 8. So fractions can be reciprocated like this. So in third table, 
and five times in third table three times so it is five times and this is uh, four times right so it is 25 by 4 3 z 12 is that correct yeah it's five times and this is three times we are correct so it is 25 by 12 and you have 4 by 5 so just bring that 4 by 5 here so 4 by 5 into 25 by 12 so if you cancel this it is five times and cancel this it is three times so you have five by three now so instead of this bracket you have five by three next we solve this so two by seven of two two one by three so three into two six six plus one seven so it is seven by three so two by seven into seven by three so seven seven get cancelled now this is two by three and we have three five by six so six three is 18 18 plus five we get 23 so it is 23 by six i bring the 23 by six here so 23 by six divided by two by three so we can reciprocate like this so 23 by six into three by two so if you saw this you get two times so 23 by two into two four so it is 23 by four minus three by two divided by five by three so if we solve this what we get so first we have to solve this division so three by two divided by five by three so if we divide this we get three by two into three by five so five by three can be written as three by five so cancel this we can't cancel three into three nine nine divided by ten now you have 23 by 4 here so it is 23 by 4 minus i write it here 23 by 4 minus 9 divided by 2 pi z 10. now we can take lcm of 4 and 10 right so if you take lcm of 4 and 10 you get 20 right so it's into 5 you get 20 and numerator also into 5 so into 2 you get 20 and this one into 2 so 5 into 23 so 230 half of it 115 minus 9 twos are 18 divided by 20 right so it is 97 divided by 20 so 9.7 by 2 right so i keep i uh, remove that zero so it is 9.7 by 2 if you cancel this it's 4 times 8 carry over 1 8 times 16 again carry over 1 so it is 5 so 4.85 is our answer so if you get 4.85 that's the correct answer and this kind of problems are really important. You can expect one question from simplification. Now moving to third question. If a cube plus b cube equal to 539 and a plus b equal to 11, then the value of square root of a plus b square plus 7ab. Now to solve this problem, we should know a cube plus b cube. What is a cube plus b cube? So a cube plus b cube is a plus b into a square plus b square minus ab, right? And you want to find square root of a plus b the whole square plus 7ab. Now, what is uh, a plus b the whole square? So it is a square plus b square plus 2ab. So the 2ab can be added with 7ab, you get 9ab. Right? Now, uh, a cube plus b cube equal to 539 and a plus b is given as 11. And uh, you can substitute this a plus b equal to 11 here. And a cube plus b cube is 539. And this is a square plus b square minus ab. Now, if you cut this, it is how many times? So it is 49 times, right? Now you have a square plus b square minus ab equal to 49. Now, what can we do? So a square plus b square. Now we know a plus b the whole square is equal into a square plus b square minus 2ab, right? Now, a square plus b square minus 2ab is nothing but a plus b the whole square. Now, to find a square plus b square, I take this minus 2ab to left hand side. So I get a square plus b square equivalent to a plus b the whole square minus 2ab, right? Now, instead of this, I can put this value, right? So it is a plus b the whole square minus 2ab minus ab equal to 49. Now, a plus b the whole square. So what is a plus b? You have 11, right? So it is 11 square. So 11 square is 121. So 121 uh, minus 2ab minus ab is minus 3ab. So I take it to right hand side. So I get plus 3ab. So if I take this 49 here, I get minus 49 equal to 3ab right so 121 minus 49 i get 2 and 7 so it's 72 equal to 3ab then what is ab so ab equal to 24 now ab equal to 24 so why i found ab equal to 24 because we have ab here right 
So if I substitute the value here, I could easily find it, right? So it is a, a plus b the whole square plus seven a b. Now, do we have, yeah. So we have a plus b the a square plus b square. So I can write a plus a square plus b square like this. So from this, I can write a square plus b square equal to 49 minus a b. Right. So I substitute this 49 minus a b here. So it is 49 minus a b. No, it is 49 plus a b. Right. So if I take this minus a b to right hand side, I get plus a b. So 49 plus a b plus 9 a b. So it is square root of 49 plus a b plus 9 a b. So it is square root of 49 plus a b plus 9 a b is 10 a b. So 10 into what is a b? a b is 24. So it is 10 into 24, 240. So it is square root of 49 plus 240, you get 289. So what is 289? Square root of 289 is 17, right? So answer for this problem is 17. See, it is mandatory to know a cube plus b cube, a plus b the whole cube, a cube minus b cube, a minus b the whole cube, a square plus b square, a plus b the whole square. So the basic, uh, algebraic expressions you should know, formulas you should know, then only you can solve this kind of problems. And this kind of problems are also very important. Okay, so you can expect this kind of question in advanced level. So this is really important. So you need more practice on similar kind of problems for that you should know that al algebraic formulas. So we can go to next question. In an examination, 55% of the students passed and 621 failed. If the number of students for the examination was 69% of those who applied for the exam, how many students applied for the exam examination? Okay, in an examination, 55% student passed. So out of 100%, 55% is passed. Then how many percentage failed? It's 45%, right? So out of 100%, 55% is passed and 45% is failed. And it is given 621 people failed. So this 45 percentage is 621, right? If the number of students for the examination was 69 percentage of those who applied for the exam. Now, before reading this statement, we can find the number of students passed, right? So 45 percentage is 621. Then what is 55 percentage? X. We can cross multiply this x equal to 621 divided by 45 into 55. So it's 11 times and this is nine times. We can cancel this uh, six times 54 carry over eight and nine times. So 69 into 11, we get nine, 15, 759. Is that correct? Yeah, 759. So 759 people passed the examination. So totally how many candidates appeared then? So passed plus failed is the total number of candidates appeared, right? So if you add it, you get uh, 0, 1, and that is 8, and 7 plus 6, you get 13. So 1380 candidates totally appeared for the examination. And in the hint, it is given 69% of the people, uh, if the number of students for the examination was 69% of those who applied for the exam. So 1380 people totally appeared, right? So appeared in appeared only, you could find the total number of people passed and total number of people failed. So total number of appeared people is 1380. That is how many percentage? 69 percentage as per the question. Now you have to find the number of candidates applied. So out of 100 percentage, only 69 percentage appeared. In that 69 percentage, that is in 1380 people, 55 percentage passed and 45 percentage failed. You should not confuse that percentage. Okay. So 69 percentage is 1380. You have to find the number of candidates applied. So for applied, it is 100 percentage, that is X. Now you have to cross multiply. So X equal to 1380 upon 69 into 100. So 69 times 2, you get 138. So 20 into 100, it is 2000. So totally 2000 candidates applied. Out of the 2000, 1380 appeared. In 1380, 759 passed and 621 failed. So that is the actual concept. Hope you are clear. Now moving to next question. Yeah, so question looks a little big. So if you have a bigger question, that means you have a huge amount of hints inside the question. In 2020, a certain number of students 
for Institute A appeared in the annual examination and 35 percentage of the student failed in the same year 250 percentage more students than that of A appeared in same examination from Institute B. If 70 percentage of the total students of A and B pass the examination then the failed percentage of students of Institute B is dash and correct to one decimal place. So if you want you can pass the video and try to work it down by yourself else we can start dealing with it. Now you have how many institutes? Two institute. So institute A and institute B. Now in institute A, 35 percentage of student failed. Then how many percentage of student passed? So in institute A, you have 100 percentage of people. Out of 100 percentage, 35 percentage failed. So how many percentage passed? So passed will be uh, 65 percentage. Right? Now in this, okay, we can uh, assume totally 1000 students from Institute A appeared for the examination out of 1000, 35 percentage failed and passed is 65 percentage. So what is 35 percentage of 1000? 350, right? And what is 65 percentage of 1000? 650. Okay, now in Institute B, 250 percentage more students appeared compared to Institute A. So what is 250 percentage of 1000? 2500. So 2,500 more students appeared in Institute B. So in Institute B, it is 1,000. So in Institute B, comparing to 1,000, you have 2,500 extra people. So totally 3,500 candidates appeared from Institute B. So you should not write 2,500. So they said in same year, 250 more students, right? So 2,500 students extra appeared in Institute B comparing to Institute A. So it is 3,500. Now, what is given? Uh, yeah, if 70 percentage of the total students of A and B pass the examination, so 70 percentage of the total students of A and B pass the examination. So what is 70 percentage? So 1000 plus 3500, we have 4500 people out of the 4500, 70 percentage people passed. So if you cancel this, so 7 5 are 35 carry over 3, 7 4 are 28 plus 3, it is 3 1 5 0 people totally passed. So from Institute A and Institute B, totally 3,150 people passed. And in Institute A alone, 6,650 candidates passed, right? So out of 3,150, 650 passed in Institute A alone. So with this, you can find the number of people passed in Institute B. So how many candidates passed? 2,500. Right. So out of 3,500, 2,500 candidates passed. Then how many candidates failed? So failed will be 3,500 minus 2,500, 1,000 candidates failed. Now you have to find uh, the failed percentage of student of Institute B. So out of 3,500 students, 1,000 students failed. So this is how many percentage? So 0, 0 cancel in fifth table 2 times and fifth table 7 times. So it is 2 by 7 into 100. Now, you don't want to multiply 200, I mean, 2 into 100 by 7. We know 1 by 7 is 14.28 percentage. Then what is 2 by 7? It is 28.56 percentage. See, we studied this percentage concept. I mean, this fraction concept in percentages, right? So you have this percentage concept attached in our description. So if you want, you can have a look at it. So it is two by seven. So what is two by seven? It is 28.56 percentage, but it is given correct to one decimal place. So it is 28.6 percentage. So answer for this question is 28.6 percentage of students in Institute B failed. So this becomes our answer. Hope you are clear. Now moving to next question. A milkman adds 20 percentage water to a given quantity of milk. He marks the price of adulterated milk by 25 percentage of the price of pure milk. What discount should he offer on the market price for no profit or no loss situation? Okay, uh, we can assume the milkman totally have 1000 milli of milk, pure milk. So our assumption is this milkman have 1000 milli of pure milk and this is 100 percentage. Okay, uh, we can take this 1000 milli price is 1000 rupees. For an example, you can assume any value. So my for my convenience, I took uh, this milkman have 1000 milli of pure milk and this 1000 milli cost is 1000 rupees and this is 100 percentage for the milkman. Now, he adds 20 percentage water to this milk. So what is 20 percentage of 1000? 
200 ml so he added 200 ml of water to the milk so he totally have how much 1200 ml so this is mixture not the pure milk this is mixture so water is 200 ml in it now he marked the price of the adulterated milk by 25 percentage of the price of pure milk so what this guy is doing he marked the adulterated milk by 25 percentage of the pure uh, price of pure milk so price of pure milk we took it as 1000 rupees so this 1000 ml is 1000 rupees so what this guy is doing he is marking 25 percent is more than this cost price so what is 25 percentage of 1000 250 so he is marking 1250 rupees as the marked price of the milk so this 1200 ml is 1250 now what discount should he offer on the marked price for no profit or no loss situation now he should not get a profit or loss so to get no profit or no loss he have to sell this mixture for 1000 rupees only right because the actual cost price is 1000 only so he want to sell only for 1000 rupees so he want to give how much discount so from 1250 he want to give 250 rupees discount right so what is 250 rupees out of the 1100 i mean 250 so 250 is what percentage of 1250 because from market price only he is giving a discount so this 250 is what percentage of 1250 so it is 5 times so if you cancel it 20 percentage so from this market price 1250 he want to give a 20 percentage discount to get no profit or no loss situation and this becomes our answer hope you are clear with this tcs nqt question now moving to next question okay and one more thing see on left hand side you could see something so download our app cdts from play store so where i have posted lot of videos related to tcs nqt and you can watch the videos at free of cost right so just you can download that uh, android mobile app in your mobile cdts and you can be uh, you can view uh, the last uh, year tcs nqt aptitude questions right now moving to next question so this is last question of this session a shopkeeper gains 20 percentage by selling an article at 25 percentage discount on its market price if the cost price of the article increases by 20 percentage how much discount percentage should he give now on the same market price to get a profit of 8 percentage okay uh, we can keep the cost price of the article 100 rupees and this cost price is how many percentage cost price is always 100 percentage right and he gains 20 percentage by selling this article so what is the selling price then so from cost price only he gains 20 percentage profit that means he want to sell for 120 rupees then only he will gain a 20% profit and he gives a 25% discount from the market price that means from cost price 100 rupees he is getting a 20% profit and that to uh, after giving a discount of 25% from the market price right so if you keep market prices 100% then what is selling price so selling price is only 75% of market price right because from market price he gave a 25% discount then only he is selling for 120 so he is getting a 20% profit from cost price so the selling price is only 75% of market price so the 75% is 120 then what is 100% this market price x now you have to cross multiply so 120 upon 75 into 100 so it is four times and this is three times and this is 40 so 40 into 4 160 so market price of this article is 160 so what is happening here he purchased a product for 100 and marked 160 from that he gives a 25% discount and sold for 120 so that he gained 20% profit now what you have to do how much discount percentage should he give now on the same market price okay and the cost price of the article increases by 20% see now instead of this 100 rupees we have to fix cost prices 120 because it is increased by 20% right now how much discount percentage should he give now on the same market price so market price is same to get a profit of 8% so he want to get how much profit 8% so if he want to get 8% profit he want to sell the product for how many percent 108% right so first i find 8% of this 120 So six eights are forty eight. So forty eight by five rupees. 
So he want to uh, sell for 48 by 5 rupees extra. So what is the cost price? 120. So with this 120 rupees, he want to sell for 48 by 5 rupees extra. Then only he get 8% profit, right? So 5 into 120 is 600. 600 plus 48, 648 divided by 5. That means he want to sell the product for 648 by 5 rupees, right? And he is giving how many percentage discount from market price? This is what you have to find, right? Now, uh, market price is 160 and selling price is 648 by 5. So how many rupees discount he gave? 160 minus 648 by 5. So 5 into 160, 800. 800 minus 648. Uh, 52 152 so 152 by 5 rupees he gave discount from which price he gave discount from market price only he gave discount so comparing to this market price 160 this 150 by 5 is what percentage so it is 160 into 100 so 150 by 152 by 5 divided by 160 into 100 because comparing to market price only he gave a discount of 152 by 5 so this is how many percentage so if you solve this 152 divided by, so 5 into 160 is 800 into 100. So 0, 0 cancel, and this is 1 times 8, and you have a 7, so it is 9. So 19 percentage discount he gave from this market price to get an 8 percentage profit. So answer for this question is 19 percentage discount given. Hope you are clear. Okay. So that's it for this session. And as I intimated, you can download our app CDTS from Play Store and you can watch all our videos of TCS NQT at free of cost. So if you feel this video is worth, you can share it to your friends and stay connected with Career Deep Training Solutions. Thanks a lot for watching.